before we move on to the footer, let's get the shadow for our menu as well. Right now it's just super plain. So let's go ahead and back inside of our application.scss. And we will move up to the menu drawer class. And just before the phone include, let's add an ampersand and the before selector. And inside of here, we'll give it an empty content. Then the width will be 100%, height will be 100%, and position will be absolute. And then we'll give it a top of zero and left of zero. And now the box shadow, you can do box shadow, one pixel, three pixels, 47 pixels, 37 pixels, and then RGBA will be 0, 0, 0, and then 0 0.25 for the opacity. So let's go ahead and copy this three times now, and we'll add the shadow WebKit as well. We're adding the WebKits for the shadows is because each browser handles the box shadows differently, and we want to make sure that it doesn't look messed up. And then we'll add a Mozilla as well. Now, the way to generate these box shadows, because obviously you're not going to know what each number means, you can go ahead into Google and type in box shadow generator, and there's a bunch of good ones, but you can literally pick whichever one you want, and you can play around with the numbers until you find the box shadow that you need. So over here we have 25 opacity, and our blur is 37. And this is pretty much what we have here now, 47 for this. And then you can just copy this whole code here and paste it into your, your code if you want to add a shadow to something else. I just thought I'd show this as an interesting tool that you can implement in your own work. And we actually need to add a few more things. So let's add the transition property. And this will be opacity. Actually, let's remove this O here. And now the Z index will give it negative one. So let's save this and see how our shadow looks. So right now, again, the shadow is overlapping the website, and that's because we didn't specify that it should disappear when the hidden class is active. So let's go over here and we can type in dot menu drawer and then we'll type in dot hidden and then we'll use the before selector. And now we can say opacity equals zero. All right, perfect. So let's refresh this. And now the shadow is working as it should. Perfect. So the next thing that we want to do is actually take a look at the footer. And as we can see, the footer here has a top border. Then it has a message here that you can write a description about your, the website. And then we have some links. So let's go ahead and create that. If you remember inside of our layout, theme.liquid, we have already rendered the footer file. So we don't need to do that again. But let's go ahead and close the header and the menu drawer. And now we can go inside of our footer file that we already created, but it's empty. So we actually need to mark up this file now. And we will create a footer component, and then the class name will be footer. Inside of here, we can create another div with the class name of footer inner. And also we'll add the class name of flex and space between just to kind of utilize those class names that we created before. And then inside of here, we'll create another div with the class name of footer left. And we'll utilize the class half that we created as well. And then we'll create another div with the class name of footer right. And we'll add a class name of flex and space between and then half as well. So if you remember, 
for the class name of half, we just put in width of 50%. And then inside of the footer right, we'll create another div with the class name of footer menu. And then we'll also give it a class name of flex and column and half as well, because we want to have two menus inside of the right side. And just underneath that, we'll create another div with the class name of footer menu as well. And then this one will be footer social. And then we can add a class name of flex and column as well. And then we'll give it half to take up 50% of the width. Now, what we can do for this footer menu, let's go back inside of our menu drawer and we'll just copy the footer menu. So we can actually just take this whole UL and paste it in here. It kind of ruined the formatting, so let's fix that. And then inside of this div, let's write build a Shopify theme from scratch. And what we can do later is actually change this to be customizable by the user. So this is all finished now, but let's go down to the social menu. And we will also create an unordered list here. And then we'll create an LI. And inside of this LI, we'll have a link. So we can say a tag and then the href. We can just type in www.facebook.com. And we'll also actually create customizations for these as well. But for now, let's just keep these in, in place. And we'll just copy it a few times. And let's also type in the name here. We'll type in Facebook. So let's actually redo this. OK, perfect. So now if we save this and go back to our website, let's take a look at how our footer looks. So it looks pretty much finished already, actually, just because we've already pre-created those class names. And I just wanted to show you as well why those class names are very useful because you can just put them in and you don't need to touch CSS again for this particular component. But obviously, we still need to style a few more properties for this. So let's go back inside of our application.scss and just below the menu, and just above the hero section, let's create another section and we'll name this one start footer. So now let's go ahead and choose the footer in our class. And we'll say padding top will be 25 pixels. And then padding bottom will give it 60 pixels just because we want a little bit more space there. And then border top. We can say one pixel and solid and black. Now for the actual hover effect that we have over here, as you can see, whenever we hover over a particular item, the other ones kind of change opacity. So what we can do is we can create a media and then we'll say hover, hover and pointer will be fine. And then for the footer menu for the A tags inside of it, we can say transition and color will be 0 0.5 seconds. And then footer menu UL hover. And then we'll choose the A tag and we'll say that we want the color to be just a little bit lighter. So we can choose this one over here, 9A, 9A, 9A. And then also we will style the LIs as well. So footer menu LI and then hover. And then we can say that we want the color to be changed to black. So let's save this now and check out how it looks. Okay, that works pretty well. We can just hide that bar over there. So whenever we go over any of the actual links, the other ones turn to a little bit of a lighter color. And this just adds a nice 
user experience. So in order to make our footer dynamic and to be able to add a schema to it, we will actually need to convert it into a section. So let's go ahead and copy all of this. And we can go inside of our sections folder and create a new file called footer.liquid. And let's go ahead and paste our whole snippet in here. What we can do now is go inside of our layouts folder and into the theme.liquid. And instead of the render method, we will use the section method to display the footer. So the render method is for the snippets and then the section method is self-explanatory, it's for the sections. So let's save this here. And now if we go back inside of our customizer and refresh, we will actually see that this footer section appeared here. So while these ones are customizable, because we hard-coded the footer inside of our theme.liquid, this footer section is here to stay. So the user cannot delete it. And right now we don't have any schema inside of our footer. That's why the section has no content or settings. So let's go ahead and actually add some schema now. Going back inside of our code, let's close the theme.liquid and then let's close the footer snippet. And at the bottom of the footer section, we can create a schema tag and the schema tag name will be footer. And then we'll say settings and open up an array. And inside of here will be an object and the type will be text because we want to make the title or that description portion of our footer customizable. So we'll say text and the ID will be title here. And then for the label, let's go ahead and say footer description and default value we can just say footer description. So this is the title. So let's go ahead and change this to be customizable. And we can say section.settings.title over here. And then for the other part, let's go ahead and add some blocks. So after the settings, we'll create blocks. And this will be an array as well. And inside of here will be an object. And we'll give it a type of social link. And then the name will give it social. And then for the settings, we'll open another array. And inside of here, we'll have an object. And so we can just actually copy this and replace that portion of it. And now instead of the footer description, this will be the social title. And then we can just remove the default value. And let's copy this one more time. But now instead of the text type, we'll say it will be the URL. And then the ID will be link. And this will be social link. All right, perfect. So now we actually need to use the blocks. So let's go ahead and remove all of these hard coded ones. And then just underneath the UL, let's go ahead and create a for loop. So we'll say for block in section dot blocks. And then let's go ahead and and the for. And we'll just move this inside of our for loop. And let's indent this. So now for the href, we can just utilize our schema. So we can say block.settings.link. And then over here for the name, we can also just say block.settings.title. And perfect. So let's save this now. And we'll go back inside of our customizer and refresh. And if we go down to the bottom, we can see now that our social links disappeared and the footer description changed. So let's go inside of our footer now and we can change the description and we can just steal it from over here. And now we can add some social links. So the first one, we can say Facebook and this will go to facebook.com. 
And now we can add another block. And this one, we'll just say Twitter. And this will be www.twitter.com. And now for the last one, we can just add YouTube and say www.youtube.com. And perfect. So we just created a customizable footer menu. So this theme is coming together really nicely and we're pretty much finished with all of the functionality. We have our menu working, the cart working, and the footer working. In the next section, we're just gonna polish up the theme with some animations, as well as make a few changes for the mobile view as well. So I just wanna say congratulations for sticking through to the end of this course. I know it's been a very information dense course with many different topics like Vue.js and Liquid, but now you have seen just how easy it is and how quickly you can create a custom Shopify theme using Shopify Liquid and Vue.js to manage the cart and make everything super dynamic and super modern. So let's jump into the next section where we're gonna wrap everything up and you're gonna be able to add this amazing theme to your portfolio. So I'm super excited. I'll see you in the next section.